Um, yeah, kia ora tato, call Mary Toku Ingwa. Um, and I, I currently live in Wellington and it was really lovely for Alan to invite me along today. It's been wonderful to hear the other speakers and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Mike and Erin in a little bit. I, I wasn't given much direction on what, um, what would be the best things to talk about, which is also lovely to uh, have the scope of um, just turning a timer on of of what is most important to me and I can really only speak from my experience as a young blind woman um, and I have lots of friends who also have low vision or blindness and I do work for the organization which is now called Blind Low Vision New Zealand open bracket formerly the Blind Foundation close bracket um, and so that's over in Newtown I'm there three days a week and I kind of try and match up volunteers with members and do some education around arts and culture organizations within the city. Um, so yeah, I have I have a lot of time that I spend with other people who have vision impairment, but, um, but these are mostly my experiences that I'm keen to share with you around how I feel when I'm traveling around Wellington City. Uh, and I do just want to mention, um, it was really great when Judith was talking about people who might need more time to cross a crossing. And I think, I think Invercargill might have a similar system, but you just press this, there's two buttons um, on, on the pole that, you know, normally there'll just be one for a regular time. And I've heard some um, other people from the blind community who've, who've indicated that that is a thing in Invercargill. I'm not sure if it was a trial or ongoing, but, um, but I just thought I would mention that as a, as a homeland example. Um, and I also wanted to Mahita Connor about the kind of different experience traveling when walking uh, over lockdown, because that was one of the things I constantly heard and have definitely observed myself that I just felt so much more comfortable walking around on the footpaths when there was less traffic. And I was just having to, um, I didn't have to spend as much energy thinking about where a hundred things were because there was only a car once every few minutes rather than all the time. Um, yeah, so, so for me, I, I was born with a vision impairment, which meant I had about 10% of normal sight growing up and, and then lost that as a teenager. So I can still see light and dark, but I rely on using a white cane and, um, and my other senses to, to orient myself in this space. So sometimes that's, you know, with other people describing things, but if I'm somewhere new by myself, um, I have to use other kind of like problem solving methods to get from A to B or to find someone who can describe things. Um, but that's not the majority of, of the community. And for, and for me, like I've had my vision impairment for a long time. So for someone who has gone through most of their life with regular vision and then in their 70s or 80s or 90s has experienced vision loss, that, that's a lot more common in New Zealand than, than my situation. Um, but for me, walking, I love Wellington. I love, you know, how the hills kind of wrap around the city and we've got this amazing harbour and this wonderful vibe of it being a really arty place and, and liberal, but also very, like, politics central and 95% um, of people will say, oh, yes, I'm a policy analyst, if you ask them. Um, but for me, getting around the things that I'm conscious of are, are safety and and things that move. So I really struggle when there's roadworks that are unexpected and there might not be something on the ground that my cane would catch. I would hit my elbow or shoulder or temple with one of those diagonal like diamond signs that is showing a picture of something. Um, so things like that where there, there could have been slight infrastructure changes when there's temporary things going up would really help me. Um, but yeah, I think when when I when I talk to sighted people and they say, "Wow, you walk from your place in Thorndon to Newtown, like how how does that work? How can I couldn't do that with my eyes shut and stuff?" Um, but of course, they're not aware or their mind jumps to how difficult it would be for them if they were wearing a blindfold after having lived as a sighted person for a long time. So I think um, what has been said by previous speakers about disabled people having the experience um, really taken on board. I, I find it really difficult with um, 
with lots of other people around or at, uh, at kind of rush hour times. So for me, like having sandwich boards and tables and chairs and lots of other things coming and going is, is quite tiring, um, like mentally, just to try and keep track of where everything is. And I feel like I'm a very uh, confident and fairly competent cane user um, now after having used a cane for 13 years. Um, but there's still times where, uh, yeah, where I, I do feel unsafe just because of the, the masses of things happening at one time. And that it takes me a really, it can take me a really long time to, to walk somewhere and lots of energy compared to if someone is guiding me, I'm holding the elbow and we can just zip through crowds so easily. It's, um, yeah, it feels like it's takes half the time and a quarter of the kind of mental energy that it takes if I'm by myself. But I really want to be able to walk from A to B by myself so I can use GPS technology to do that or I can learn with an orientation mobility instructor, uh, like the good landmarks to use and all these, uh, you know, different things that over time give me a really good picture of, you know, familiar routes and that type of thing. Um, I was just also going to mention that I've had this experience recently where uh, a friend who um, is blind and lives in Melbourne and, and um, she had started going out with a, a friend, uh, like a guy in Wellington. So, and it, she's in Wellington now, which is really lovely. And they're back to um, being physically together and stuff. So, uh, she's blind and and we've been kind of going around Wellington City and I'm not a trained orientation mobility instructor but it's been really interesting thinking about how to describe intersections like where Courtney Place meets Taranaki Street and then there's these two kind of divergent rows of Dixon and Manners and the buses go here and the cars go here um, but yeah it's really just made me think about some of those quite difficult intersections but also how compact Wellington is and that if we had a good plan and better infrastructure that it could work for so many people. Um, I personally definitely find that the bricks, yeah, are very slippery. And the uh, the, other, the only other time that I've had a major incident apart from like minor slips on bricks is where there was a poster that had fallen down onto the bricks and my foot just must have gone in the exact middle of the poster and it was very slidey, so it slid away from me and I kind of ended up doing a bit of a split, which was um, quite embarrassing at the time, but all good and I didn't do any major physical damage. Um, but yeah, there's just lots of things I think as someone with a vision impairment that you, you don't pick up on, you can't scan the area. So that feeling of safety is really about knowing exactly where you are and being able to rely on familiar landmarks. Um, so I think, yeah, when we've got lots of extra construction, when we've got other things coming onto the footpath, when we don't have a bylaw that says the building line should be free and walkable and, you know, being able, able to be used as a landmark, um, that's, that's quite tricky. And I did just want to talk about e-scooters because they are one of the major things that stop me wanting to go out. And I'm really concerned about how, as a long time cane user, as someone who's become really comfortable with my vision impairment, um, that, that the introduction of e-scooters onto footpaths, onto places you're really not expecting them, um, was a massive change in, in how confident I felt about going out. And I have friends in the blind community in Auckland who, you know, had e-scooters there beforehand. And they said, oh, Mary, they're just really quiet. And um, and it's it's really, it's just terrible. So just watch out when they come to Wellington. And I was like, <laughs> I feel really bad about this now. But I was kind of like, oh, we've got shared bike schemes in Wellington. And sometimes they get left on the footpath. And, you know, I kind of bump into them. It's annoying. Um but I, yeah, I was really underestimating the impact it would have on me emotionally of having these really fast, nearly silent um, machines that, especially at the beginning, were like novelty joyride for a lot of people. And there was just so many of them compared to, um, you know, like Onzo bikes or something like that. Um, 
and there's a few factors that that really make me not want to go out um recent recently i've walked into several cars on pedestrian crossings um on three times on bowen street so thursday friday last week and then again on tuesday and i sent a bit of a grumpy tweet to the world i'm not a big twitter user but it was just an a really annoying situation where cars obviously or drivers you know impatient to get across a an intersection to not have to wait for the next cycle of lights and um and so i'm you know waiting along listen for the for the beep there's lots of commuters heading back to the station or crossing bone street and suddenly i whack this car and that time i had not heard it all sometimes i hear a car idling across a pedestrian crossing but i really just didn't and you know, like my cane is in front of me. So that hit at first, not me personally. And then my cane, you know, like jabbed me in the stomach um, because I was, you know, walking at a decent pace to get across the Bowen Street. And then so I kind of had to navigate around the car and try and find my direction again. And I'm in the middle of this intersection. I'm not sure how long the, um, the walking signal is actually going for. Um, yeah, and so it was fine. I didn't do any major damage, but I'm, I'm re really aware that for other people who might also have hearing loss or might have mobility issues. And in New Zealand, the median age of, of blind foundation members, sorry, blind low vision NZ, um, members is just over 80. Um, and so a lot of people do have um, different, you know, needs and, and their capacity to deal with different situations is, is trickier than mine. Um, so I'm just really aware of aware of that uh, i'm really looking forward to hearing mike and erin so i might stop there and happy to take questions after um and i did just want to mention about um yeah there's like this physical infrastructure challenge that i have as a blind person but there's also um the education of non-disabled public about how they could actually help me on the street or um those types of things and also the you know major major issue about the wider disability community that um, I'm in a really privileged and fortunate situation where I live in Thorndon. Like I love how walkable Wellington is, but a lot of people because of the crazy housing situation, because of the lack of accessible housing, are having to live way further out. And um, either you know like the public transport there doesn't work for them, or um, or it's too expensive to you know come into the city, and so. You can't really measure the low participation or lack of certain groups of people in a space that, that our current society is causing. Yeah.